We're with Margaret Carey today. Margaret, thank you very much for visiting us. Oh, this is such fun. It's good to have you in Culver City again. Tell us about the first time you were in Culver City. Well, I was about four years old and we had gotten a call from Central Casting to come over and see whether I could go be part of our gang or Little Rascal, whichever one you want to call it. And my dad, who was an outside salesman, had his own car. I mean, we're talking about depression here. And so my mother, who just was sure that we were going to get smashed with every car that came the other direction, would be sitting there in the front seat going, mm, 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 as a car came and my father would say, good God, Grace, I know how to drive this car. And I'm standing back there behind her seat going, where are we going? Then the fog came in because it was very early in the morning and I guess it was because you didn't have a lot of buildup around Culver City that there was a lot of fog and we got through that and then we found the gate to go through and in we went with a whole group of kids and I lined up with my little, I was cold because we couldn't wear sweaters, we had to show how cute we were. And then two men walked up and down and said, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And I looked over and my mother was smiling. So that must have been good. Well, it was, because we were chosen to be part of our game. And we got back in the car, and then I sat back. And I'm one of these three people from the time I was four. Every sign that I saw, I would read, still do. And I would say, what's that? What's that say? And he said, honey, that says Culver City. What's the Culver City? And he says, well, this place is a very small town, but it has big studios. Fred, watch, watch out, that car's coming. Yes, Grace, I'm watching out. But I have clients in Culver City. It's one of my favorite places to go to. So you're gonna be working in a place called Culver City. And I said, that's good, huh? And he said something, Darrow, that's wonderful. And I went, she's, she'll make $8.50 a day. And I thought, well, I guess that's good. So about what year was that? Mm, I would say 1933, 1934, okay, right around and that, there. And that would have been at the Hal Roach Studios? That would have been at the Hal Roach Studios. I don't remember um, meeting Mr. Roach Sr. until the second time that I came. I think I did about five. The first two I was sort of the blur, mm -hmm. you know, that I went through. And so it was all so new to me. Four-year-olds had no idea what was going on. We had never been on a sound stage before. So, but we knew that we had to behave ourselves because that's what kids did then. And um, so I've always had a wonderful, warm feeling for Culver City. I went to work at MGM later on. I was under contract with them for a very short period of time. And I must tell you that unlike the Roach Studios, the Hal Roach Studios, that MGM scared me because it was so big. And my mother was, was the nervous kind, you know, the, the fingers all the time around. And I was never quite sure whether she knew what. But we would go to a sound stage, right? And then we would break for lunchtime and you would get on a little trolley. And then you would go to the commissary or wherever you were going to eat. And I was sure that my mother was going to forget what sound stage it was. So I kept asking, you know, what sound stage was it? Was? Because I tell you, MGM just went on forever. But I didn't get that feeling that you, that that's the way it worked with Hal Roach. Working at the um, Selston studio, I only worked there once. Loved it. And I did the oddest thing. What was that? <laughs> I, I was. Um, I was the body of Jennifer Jones. <laughs> well, speaking of bodies, that's a natural transition. Seems to me that you you were the live action model for Tinkerbell <laughs> for Walt Disney's Peter Pan. Yes, I worked over at the Disney Studios when they only had one sound stage at oh. that time. And what they did was they cast me in the role of this little sprite who didn't talk put me in front of a camera crew on, the, on their sound stage with a psych at the end, and then told me what they wanted her to do, what scenes they wanted. So I would act them out, they would film them, they'd give that film to the animators who would then draw Tink without looking like me. So that's why Tink looks like me. Uh, 
they had this wonderful drawing by the great Mark Davis, who was just the dearest man that God ever put on the face of the earth. He also did Cruella, DeVille, he did um, Pirates of the Caribbean, he did um, The Haunted Mansion, you know, just a genius, but sweetheart. So he had done this drawing of Tinkerbell, but it was only two dimensional. They needed the third dimension. What is her personality going to be like? So I stepped out in front of the camera and I said, okay, uh, Mark, what do you want her to do? You want it to be real funny or cute? You know, what? Meglin Kitty type? Or, or do you want her to be just too, too divine? What do you want? And he said, we want her to be you. So her personality and my personality are interchangeable. And that's why to this day I say, I'm Tinkerbell. So I guess if I asked you what your favorite character that you played was? Oh, the favorite character that I played? Hmm, that's a good question. I've never been asked that before. For many different reasons, I think my favorite character uh, was the first one that I did here in Culver City because it started me on the road and I knew what a soundstage was. I knew something that other kids didn't know. And so for 76 years, I've been going on the same path. So I started right here in this wonderful town. So I loved that one. I love being Eddie Cantor's daughter and uh, Joan Davis's daughter in a movie called If You Knew Susie over at RKO, which again is a small lot, comfortable lot, enjoyable lot. And so uh, that's when Eddie Cantor changed my name. I was Peggy Lynch in Arcade Comedies, but I became Margaret Carey. Mr. Cantor said, that's your new name. And I said, yes, Mr. Cantor. So I love doing that. I love doing voiceovers for Hutch Cargo, Space Angel, The Nature Stooges. I loved working at Disney, I still do. And then I loved being on the radio for my own shows. How did you meet Martha Siegel? Uh, through, through a SIFA. Animation Society International of Art, and I was on the board, the only girl with 14 men. I've never been patted on the head so much in my <laughs> life. That's nice, Margaret. Well, we give awards, and when we give awards, you put your names up to certain jury awards, and I put up Martha's name, and Bill Ryan did too, and in 30 seconds everybody said yes. It was, it was the fastest that I've ever seen. Well, we're glad you met her, and we're glad you're back in Culver City. And I'm glad I'm here with you, Julie, and your whole crew. They've just been wonderful. And one of the places that just gives me a lump in my throat is your wonderful hotel. It is just that there, there is something about seeing it that says, all's right with the world. <laughs> Thank you.